Welcome back my dear students and uh, parents and viewers of NTV. So, we are in, in the discussion of certain topics of grade 12. In fact, today I was just briefing you about the certain phenomena exhibited by light that is uh, useful for uh, the grade 12 students. So, as I mentioned before, today it is the beginning session of the third season of my teacher, the biggest classroom of the UAE. So, if any sort of uh, problems, you have to get back to us and we will be able to sort them out. Okay. So, now I will uh, just have a recap through what we have just uh, finished doing, then I will tell you something more about the next chapter. Okay. Have a look at the uh, slides. The phenomena which we are uh, we have in ray optics that is reflection, okay, reflection, then we have refraction, another example of refraction, refraction leads to total internal reflection, total internal reflection is what is made use of in optical fiber communication and this is another example or you can see in the uh, pic picture about example of total internal reflection, this is another place this optical fi fiber bundle is used for the show pieces and all. That is again example of total internal reflection and the refraction itself is what is again made use of in uh, dispersion and uh, this is an, uh, another example you can see this is also a picture that indicates refra uh, dispersion which is in fact the outcome of or consequence of dispersion sorry re refraction. Then rainbow is a practical example which you see in the nature of dispersion and this is also another instance this is secondary rainbow formation that is again dispersion only. This is another phenomenon which you can see scattering of light, light gets scattered you can see the light coming from the sun, it is getting scattered and the scattering only leads to different colors of light sorry colors of the sky say blue color of sky, reddish appearance uh, during sunset and sunrise all these examples of scattering of light. Scattering of light you might have studied in, uh, the, in the chapter that is Rayleigh's law of scattering is one of the points which you should know to understand what is scattering. This is another example you can see for scattering of light is again scattering of light another picture. Tyndall effect is another beautiful example uh, to show scattering of light. In addition to these all phenomena which we uh, which I explained are based on a theory called corpuscular theory or Newton's theory of light. Newton's corpuscular theory of light is what is the basis of all these phenomena which we discussed. Precisely let me tell you reflection, refraction, dispersion and scattering. These things you do in the chapter ray optics. Okay, so, the next content about wave optics when we say that is there in fact the basic difference is that wave theory of light otherwise Huygens principle of the wave theory wave front is what is made use of in explaining the phenomena exhibited by light certain phenomena that is why it is considered as the second group of uh, processes or phenomena that is coming in the second chapter of wave optics. So, there are two streams you can either use Newton's corpuscular theory of light or you can use Huygens wave theory of light depending upon which phenomena you are to explain both the theories equally uh, do exist together because light has got dual nature it has got particle nature and wave nature you know both are uh, both the uh, you know theories are valid for explaining the phenomena exhibited by light. So, the wave theory of light is what is made use of in explaining the phenomena like what all interference, diffraction and polarization of light. Remember in the chapter of wave optics we have these three phenomena to discuss interference, diffraction and polarization. See in fact, diffraction is something which you can see in the picture if you look at the uh, picture you can see. See look at the picture very carefully the edges of the blade you know it is not uh, that sharp there is a blurring. Okay, so, we say that the waves falling over there are, are bent around because of the wave nature light is bent around this phenomenon is what is this, this uh, sorry di diffraction diffraction is the phenomenon of bending and spreading of the waves around the corners of opaque objects. See another example of diffraction you can see here. Okay, so, the, the blurring of light, so you can see on the shadow 
the edge of the shadow is not as sharp as of the real object. See diffraction in the picture you can clearly make out when light is passing through a small gap or we say a small slit the waves are going away and uh, what you observe is there are uh, what you say wave fronts created. So, this phenomenon of bending and spreading is what is termed as diffraction. Okay. So, this is another phenomenon what we call as polarization. Polarization you can see you look at the picture carefully light has got vibrations present in all directions. Okay. When it is passing through a, a certain substances what you call as C polarizer the vertical polarizer is kept. So, when it is passing through the first polarizer you see that the light is confined to vibrations only in one plane. So, what comes out of the first polarizer is polarized light. So, you know polarized light and then what comes is after that the second polaroid kept that it has got horizontal pass axis. So, what you observe is light will not be allowed through the second polaroid. So, polaroid or polarizer is a very useful device and which we use uh, on a day to day basis. You all of you must be familiar with sunglasses we use and uh, tinted uh, uh, films sun control films in vehicles all these can be considered as polarizers. So, polarizers are commonly used for reducing the intensity of light. So, when see as I showed you in the picture when light is coming it has got vibrations confined in all different directions and when it is passing through the polaroid what happens is the vibrations are being filtered out. So, more precisely if let us say I is the intensity of light okay, falling on a polarizer and when it comes out it will have intensity I by 2 only half it will be cut. Okay, then you must be familiar with the Mallet's law okay, related to they will come to that one by one and this is uh, you know an example of polaroid polaroid sunglasses. Okay, so, that is the case that we know, but again let me tell you something. So, a, you can see on the board if there is a light falling on one of the polaroid suppose this is the polaroid say this is of intensity i when it comes out what happens is its intensity would be just half. Okay, so, that is the concept of polarization and, and when it is passing through another polaroid what happens is this light you know it has got vibrations in all directions. So, you can say vibrations were confined in all directions, but now it would be confined to only one plane. So, this light can be called as polarized light right. So, we use the second crystal or second prism which is kept perpendicular to the first if you say this light coming out if these two are 90 degree with each other no light comes out this is what is shown in the. So, the intensity over here will be 0 no light this is what is shown in the picture uh, before right and what else is this is uh, what is governed by a law that law is what is called Malice law which says intensity of light coming out of this if this is I 0 let us say this I 0 by 2 okay, and when it is coming through this I 0 by 2 into cos squared theta is the intensity of the light over here. That is why from this you can clearly make out if the angle between the two is 90 degree if theta is 90 what you can make out is the cos, uh, cos, cos 90 is 0. So, intensity would become 0 or if it is theta is 0 that is if the two crystals are uh, or the two prisms are parallel to each other the axes are parallel to each other what, what will be the observation parallel to each other means theta would be 0. So, maximum intensity will come out this concept is what is called Malice law. Now, I will show you one simulation that will help you to understand the concept of uh, interference. See you can see interference and polarization. Okay, you see on the screen you can see the light is coming out. Okay, the waves are going in all directions you know the dark part is what is what you can compare with a trough and the bright part can be compared as a uh, crust okay, trough and crust. So, we can you know say, suppose if there are two sources. Now, this is what is leading to the phenomenon called interference. So, you must be familiar with interference. So, interference is what is happening over here you can clearly see that when waves overlap what is formed over here you look at the screen and say there are 
alternate dark and bright bands seen that will be seen on the screen. So, if you keep a screen over here, you will be able to observe alternate dark and bright bands. And that can be like you know the spacing also is a factor. So, if you change the spacing, you can clearly see that the, the pattern will be changing, see I'm changing the spacing. You know there is a, a term called fringes, fringe width all this you must be familiar with. But again if I change it to a single slit, what do you make out? You see only one source, light is passing through a single slit. This is what is leading to diffraction. Okay, so, this, this one the, the width of the slit I am changing, I am reducing the width of the slit. You can see that the width is reduced, you see from here the diffraction happens. So, this diffraction is again leading to alternate dark and bright band. See, if you draw a graph over here, you can see at the center there is maximum intensity, center there is maximum intensity, you can clearly see, okay, then intensity keeps decreasing. Whereas, in the case of interference, what is, what is actually happening is, if there are uh, two sources, see two slits, okay, sorry, uh, the no barrier I am using, two lights, now intensity, screen is shown here, okay, alternate dark and bright bands. And if you plot intensity distribution curve, see what you observe here. All bright bands have the same intensity and even width of the bands also same. You see the graph. So, these points are the dark bands and the top points are the bright bands. So, the distance between two bright bands and the distance between two dark bands are of the same value that is what is indicated by the equation beta is equal to lambda d by d, right. That equation you are familiar with, right. Now, coming to this one, have a look at this. Now, I had given you actually a an overall view of what you call as the properties or phenomena exhibited by light. Once again reflection, refraction, total internal reflection and dispersion those are the outcome or consequences of refraction. Then wave properties explained or used to explain interference, diffraction and polarization. Interference is in fact leading to many other different uh, phenomena like every day very uh, typical example of interference is what is the colors in soap bubbles, coloration of soap bubbles. Okay, I will uh, explain that and you know the in soap bubbles the colors can be produced due to some specific phenomena that uh, you might I will explain about that first then we will come back to one more video, I will show you after that. Okay. First you listen to this. Suppose this is a film. So, I drew an enlarged view of the film. Okay. This film has a thickness T. Imagine if light is striking here. Okay. This light if it is white light, this light partly it will be refracted and partly reflected, reflected and refracted. Okay, so, imagine angle of refraction is r and the reflect, refracted ray from here, the bottom face, it would be reflected further and come out like this. So, we see that these two light rays, they possess a specific path difference. Okay. So, what I am explaining is why you observe colors in liquid films, example like soap bubble is a typical example. Then you can say even um, the oil film on the surface of water that also is another example where you see beautiful colors. Those colors are is actually as the outcome of interference of light that is what I am explaining. So, what this is? This is a the enlarged view of a thin soap film, okay, thin liquid film and we assume mu as the refractive index of the liquid film. Okay. And between these two rays there is a path difference, you know this much extra it travels. So, there is a path difference which is given by an equation delta is equal to 2 mu t cos r. So, 2 mu t cos r is the path difference between these two, these two rays. So, you are looking from this side and you, there is a path difference. By the way, you know if the path difference, the path difference so produced can be satisfied for both uh, what is a constructive and destructive references. Okay. So, in constructive reference we have seen delta is equal to n lambda, correct. But 
here what the situation is there is a reflection happening in between it is not similar to what you have uh, seen in Young's double slit experiment right this is there is an extra phase difference of phi due to reflection. So, what happens is the condition of the constructive and destructive inferences would get reversed it means delta is equal to n lambda will now satisfy for const, uh, sorry destructive reference not constructive. So, we can say n lambda is equal to 2 mu t cos r is satisfying for what destructive interference. So, that means now we will come to this point why colors you see this is white light coming white light has got 7 colors 7 colors have got 7 different wavelengths right out of the 7 colors with your you know violet indigo blue like that to red with your 7 different colors 7 different wavelengths right 7 different wavelengths out of this only one wavelength can be satisfied in this equation for given values of mu t and r once again for given values of the refractive index thickness of the film and angle of refraction out of 7 colors only one wavelength would be satisfied just for example say yellow's wavelength okay or wavelength of the yellow light is what is satisfied in this equation for mu for given values of mu t and r what happens the reflected light or reflected spectrum will not have yellow because it satisfies for destructive reference it will not have yellow yellow light so if out of seven colors if one of the colors is absent what would be the consequence there would be no white light it will be colored see why white light is white because all the seven colors are there right if one of the colors is absent it will become colored i hope it is clear that is once again a, among seven colors one of the wavelengths is satisfied in this equation and this equation is satisfying for destructive interference so whichever wavelength corresponding to a particular color satisfied in this equation that color will not be present or will be absent when a uh, reflected spectrum is observed so if that particular color is absent that means remaining colors are present so the reflected light appears colored that is the film appears colored so the, the the liquid film appears colored right so now again <coughs> out of the seven colors i said out of the seven colors one of them is absent right then that color see why can you say now why the, when you uh, observe the same saw bubble at different different angles when you look at different different angles also you see the colors changing colors why colors are changing we can say now another angle of uh, refraction if you look at the angle of refraction is such a way that that angle of refraction will satisfy for another wave like this maybe now instead of yellow maybe green green is absent so different different colors so different positions if you look at the bubble you will see different colors that again due to interference in short what is the reason for coloration of interference what is the reason for coloration of interference uh, sorry coloration of liquid films in short we can say coloration of liquid films or like soap bubbles is the uh, is due to the interference of the reflected light rays from the top and the bottom surfaces of the liquid film the reflect light rays from top and bottom surfaces of the liquid film if they interfere or if they, if they undergo superposition there will be uh, interference there will be coloration okay so we will talk about this and some more aspects after a very short break we will just come back with more pictures and videos related to this Okay, stay tuned.